Good afternoon, everybody. Hi. Hi. It's a beautiful spring day here in Minnesota. Hi. I know it's put me in a good mood. I hope some of you are in a good mood, too. Um, you asked me last time to begin our session today with some ideas about how parents and grandparents can work together and what happens when they don't work together in raising kids. So I thought I'd start out doing that today. Is that okay? Is that an okay way to start? Okay. Well, the first idea I want to talk about is the idea that children are not just raised by parents, even though it's mostly parents who come in here for the parent education workshops, we have to think about children growing up in, in little communities, really. And big, important people in those communities are the grandparents. You all have four-year-olds. And so they all know their grandmas and grandpas. And these are important people to them in terms of their psychological development, their sense of who they are. And grandparents generally love having grandchildren. It's a, a chance to participate in the raising of a new generation but without all the responsibility they had the first time and sometimes they want to do it better you know I mean they can look back at their own mistakes and they don't want to they want to see you repeat those and other times other times they know they've done it well because they've raised a brood of these kids and so they want to make sure that you have the benefit of their wisdom so it's not uncommon for grandparents to have strong ideas about how kids should be raised. Mm -hmm. You run into this once or twice? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. <laughs> I'm saying there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with grandparents having opinions, even strong opinions. And they also are entitled to their own relationship with their children, with the grandchildren. Um, the, the key is some clarity, some understanding between you as a parent and your parent or your in-law about who's responsible for what for the child. Children can handle lots of authority people in their lives. I mean, they got teachers, they got lots, lots of folks. As long as those adults are basically working together, and it's clear when grandma says, I should do this, and mom says, I should not do this, or dad says, I should not do this, it should be clear to the child who's ultimately calling the shots so that the child does not feel pulled. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Has anybody run into any problems in this area that we could use as an example? <laughs> yeah? Have. Okay. I have. Um, I understand what you're saying about the, <clears throat> the importance of, of, you know, grandparents to children, but I, I just don't know how to deal with the interference. Um, in, in, in who's in charge. We've been working with our four-year-old son, John, on limit setting. And in uh, his example of interference with, with my mother-in-law, on Sunday, we, um, she was over, and we had been talking about um, eat, with, with eating our snack food. And he could only have one snack in the afternoon, and it had to be nutritious. And he has to come to ask us about it. Okay, so we've got that all cleared, and we've had some limits and boundaries set about this. So when he asked if he could have a piece of cake, and I was ready to remind him about what we had just discussed mm -hmm. the, the day before. And my mother-in-law that just says, well, sure you can, John. And, and she went and cut him a piece. Um, I don't know how to deal with that. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. This was in your house? Or? The, yes, it was in our home. Yeah. Right. And so your child's asking for something. You had just discussed this, and she... Right. She and this isn't the only time. This is just okay. one example of many. The most recent one. <laughs> the most yeah. recent one. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Okay. Well, let me, let me say some things in general about that, and you'd have to decide what, what fit best for your situation. I like to think about, uh, w you know, who's in charge in what kind of environment. So suppose it had been your child and in grandma's house, and maybe for, you know, for the whole day or something, uh, hanging out with grandma, um, and, uh, and she wanted to offer your son some cake. That's a situation, I don't know how you feel about that, but as I think about that in general, if it's on her turf and your child doesn't have a bad medical reaction to cake, uh, then maybe that's a situation in which that's her, her decision. You know, you'd be hard put to tell grandma never to give a kid sweets. Okay. Uh, and if, uh, but this is this other one is a situation that's in your house, and you're there. Okay. So one way I like to think about this sort of thing is that when when you're the one who's mainly responsible for your child, mm -hmm. 
and, and your child's eating and the child's asking you for permission for something, then generally speaking, you should call the shot on that. You should make that decision. There should be a kind of a boundary, if you will, around your relationship with your child. And other people, even a loving grandma, uh, should respect that. Uh, whereas, you know, if the situation were reversed, and let's say it's a rule of her house that uh, she doesn't want kids on the furniture, and you let your kids on the furniture in your house, well, she gets to make that call, okay? Mm -hmm. Because that's her house, her territory, mm -hmm. and she should be able to decide that kids can't get on the furniture. But in your house with your child, or even in her house with your child, if you're there, and you just said, I want to eat an apple, then she ought to really respect your, your say-so. Does that make sense? It makes sense, but... How to do it is, is, a, do is it. a tricky thing. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. Have, have other people experienced this kind of thing? Welcome back from the break, everybody. You enjoy your coffee and cookies? Yeah. Uh, I was sort of hearing a kind of a buzz over in that corner of the room about the mother-in-law and, and uh, raising kids and all that. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, sounds like we need to do a little more talking about that. Um, do you want to keep talking about that for a while and kind of get into this a little bit more? Okay. Mm -hmm. You were sort of the center of the buzz over there. Do you, is there something more you want to talk about? Well, you know, I just gave one example of the mm -hmm. problems we've been having, and um, our son's birthday is coming up um, next week. He'll, uh, he's just turning four, okay, next week. And um, in the past, I've always brought up to my mother-in-law suggestions of what to, to buy our son. And she wanted to know what we were going to purchase him, and we told her that he's really into a nurturing right now, I mean, he, mm -hmm. like his father is, and that he wanted a, a doll. And she just, she just didn't understand that. She was really, um, I know she really made me feel bad about yeah. it. She said, you know, that he's, you know, a big boy, he's turning four, he shouldn't get a, ba a doll, you know, mm -hmm. and why don't you try, I thought, something a little bit more aggressive type of toy. So I, I don't know. G.I. Joe or something? Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Sounds like a good toy. Yeah. I don't How did you feel when she said that? Well, every time, I mean, I guess I'm bracing myself. Every time she starts coming over now, or I mean, comes over and starts saying things, it's like, how, I'm losing control here in my own family. That's how I feel. Mm -hmm. And because it's my husband's mother, I don't want to hurt his feelings. And so I'm really confused right now mm -hmm. on how to deal yeah, with it. It makes it harder on you because it's not your mom. It's your husband's mom. It's right. your mother-in-law. Yeah, for me, that's a big difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's getting to be a regular source of tension, it sounds like. You, mm -hmm. When you discuss your child with her, you said you're bracing yourself. Yes, I am. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. hard. Has anybody else experienced well, I had a similar experience, only I decided that I would give my mother-in-law some choices. Instead of, she wanted to uh, provide some toys um, at a holiday. And some of the ideas that she had, I did not like at all. So I thought I would try some choices within my range, like maybe a, uh, a doll that she might have a difficult time with, or maybe it could be a stuffed animal or something like that that your child could hug and cuddle and enjoy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That worked for me. Mm -hmm. Has, have you ever asked your husband to like to speak to your, your his mother and, and have him handle the situation? Well, we have talked about it, that's for sure, but he just said, you know, that's the way he was brought up, and he's just used to her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. <laughs> 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 you didn't grow up with her. You yeah. grew up with her. No. Yeah. What do you so. think you'd do if it was your own mom? Um, I would sit her down, you know, mm -hmm. at, and talk to her, you know, like what you suggested, you know, before, to, to have a time that you would be able to mm -hmm. go out and talk with her and... Um, and I would be able to do that, mm -hmm. and she would she would be fine with it. Mm -hmm. I just don't see how it would work in this situation. Does she send messages to you through her your husband? Does she would talk to you directly, or does do you hear things that she says through him that she won't and she won't bring it to you and right. talk to you? Yes, that happens a lot. Mm -hmm. oh. So again, that's another demeaning thing that happens. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. how do the dads here feel about the? Uh, 
dolls and G.I. Joes and all that. I heard a little rumbling earlier about maybe uh, G.I. Joe was a good president. Do you have any perspective on this? I don't know. It doesn't seem like that big an issue. I mean, I think she should be able to get you whatever, she, you know, should be able to get John whatever she wants. So I don't see what the problem is. So say some more about where the rub is. You don't, you're not telling her she has to buy him a doll. No, I suggest we were going to do that. Right. And give her um, some, you know, I was, then I was ready to tell her some ideas. Mm -hmm. Whereas Linda said I should mm -hmm. give her some choices. And I haven't done that before. I was mm -hmm. going to like, okay, this is what we're going to do and this is what you can buy her, buy him. And, mm -hmm. um, I guess I, I just don't feel real comfortable in talking to her. I, I don't know how to, how to bring it up. So just sit down with her. Is that what you're saying? Well, I mean, it's, 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 it's tricky. Uh, but it's, it is important to clarify whether uh, she has the right to buy the present she wants right. mm -hmm. versus comment on what you want to buy. And what I heard was that it, it was the feeling, you feeling judged that you would even want to have your kid have a doll, your boy have a doll, that that was really what it was for you. Not so much that you really thought she should go out and buy a doll. Mm. Right. I felt, yes, that I was being judged and that. And then also that my son, because uh, I, I value the nurturing sign I mm -hmm. see of him, um, that I felt she was judging him. Yeah. And therefore, if she's judging him, then she's judging me because I'm his mom. Mm -hmm. That that's not the character I want my grandchild to be. Yeah, we have both for our son. He has dolls he plays with, and he has the more quote unquote boy toys that he has. And mm -hmm. um, it doesn't seem to be a problem. He can go from one mode to the other just fine. He doesn't. Mm -hmm. like, I guess I don't see why. Um, I would tell her. I guess sit on talk to her and say we want him to have to have that nurturing side and mm -hmm. encourage that and, and, and bring that out in him. If that's something you really want, and he is your child, and that's what you want to raise him. Does it surprise you that, that you're at this point in your life? I mean, would you have thought this? No. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Not, it's just I amazing. Have. Kind of, yeah, you know, yeah, probably have children of your own. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she's of a different generation. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's hard, hard for her to understand the difference. One concern I'd have for you about that conversation, you might, you might, as you say, have that conversation once, but if it doesn't go anywhere, I'm not sure I'd, I'd uh, keep bringing it up to her. I mean, and this, this is sometimes a values difference that people have. And uh, when you say, if you decide to say, this is, we, we review the nurturing side and we think dolls are perfectly fine for little boys and consistent with being a man and all that, if she says, well, that's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard, you're in a vulnerable position again. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. So I think you need to decide if you want to do that, okay. and if so, when, and when you would be strong. Um, maybe have your husband there with you. And, but also give yourself permission to not do that, or to do it only once, because sometimes people just see things differently, and you have to raise your child as, as you want. Uh, so don't feel like, I'm suggesting you not feel like you take a mandate from us or that you have to talk this out and get through to her on it because you have to decide what, what feels right for you and how much risk you want to take with your own child. It might be different, for instance, if she was coming into the house and ripping the doll away from him. Mm -hmm. then if uh, that, that would be a more kind of aggressive thing she'd be doing mm -hmm. as opposed to just letting the issue lie. That's another option mm -hmm. for you. Uh, and let her have her views and you have yours and you get your kid what you want and, and let it go. So that, that's an option as well as the option of sitting down with her and talking about the conversation. Does she make comments to your son at all about playing with dolls and what a, you know, she thinks it's a sissy thing to do or does, does he get that message from her? She hasn't directly said it okay. to him. Mm -hmm. Because that'd be something I'd be worried about. Mm -hmm. You know, then, then he would come and, well, he, would, he wouldn't want anything to do with dolls and he would you know, cry or complain if if he had them, and then he would get that stigma that it's not okay to do that, and it's not okay to, to hug and to. Mm -hmm. so. No, she's told my or she's told my husband, but not John. Okay. And that's the difference because the adults maybe can handle that conversation differently than your son. Okay. You know, I'm remembering a time when my son was about nine years old, and I was at a relative's house, and my we we're sitting around the kitchen table, and my son came in and sat down in my lap, and this male relative of mine said, do you still sit on laps? Mm -hmm. Fortunately, my son went, huh? Didn't even, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. it seemed like a, 
something it didn't compute and he just sat there and we went over the conversation but my heart sank because I thought there was, this was lovely, you know. Mm -hmm. He's 19 now and doesn't sit on my lap, and that's <laughs> developmentally that's normal, too. <clears throat> but he was a very, you know, a very affectionate, and in a different way is still very affectionate. And, and I, I felt kind of uh, um, abused or something with that, you know. It, was, it really felt awful. Mm -hmm. And I would have said something if my son had noted it. But it just went right past, them. right past them, so I didn't make an issue of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's what I'm, I'm recalling, and it really it can be painful to realize that when you're trying to raise a child in a certain way that doesn't fit the mold necessarily, that there can be some remarks like that that, mm -hmm. that they're going to have to face. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, I have, a, I have daughters, and, um, and they like to do some things that are considered certainly male. And, um, and they'll come and ask me, well, well, they are making fun of me because I like to ride my bicycle this way and I like to do it this way and I like to play a little bit of baseball. And, and I always tell them that it's all right, you know, but at the same time, I know it hurts. It really hurts. And, and I guess I picked that up from you is that that you, when you said that you kind of shrink from your, mm -hmm. from bringing up the conversation, there's, you know, it seems like you've had some of these words before and you have some feeling that you don't really feel comfortable with her. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's right. Or mm -hmm. well, other folks have been in your place before and, yeah. and uh, you know, it sounds like you're thinking pretty clearly about it. I think mm -hmm. you're getting support for your values. Uh, and maybe getting some support for if you do want to talk to her to do so but also at least what I'm saying is that's up to you yeah. and right. you need to decide whether that's something you want to take on with her or not good luck yeah when's the birthday then we'll see what happens with that. <laughs> report back yeah. right. well thanks for sharing that with us I think that's something we all have benefited from Everybody. Hi. Hi. Um, Carrie, uh, I'm curious about how things went. We spent a lot of time on the party last time. Is anybody here curious about how yes. that went? Yes. <laughs> um, it didn't go very well, really. Oh, really? Um, I, it was a pretty emotional morning, getting everything ready, and um, by the time the party came, um, I was pretty tired. <laughs> And my mother-in-law came over, and before the ch other children came, she was going to come and help. She really wanted to help, so okay, so she could come and help. We had given John the doll this that morning, and he liked it. Right away, she came, she said the dolls, she's going to the bedroom before the other kids came over. And, well, okay, and mm. that already, st you know, started me going, but I didn't say anything then. And uh, I was uh, trying to uh, get the games going, and she just said, this isn't working real well. She kept interfering. I asked my husband for support. He, he doesn't speak up in front of her at all. He's like, I mean, I, don't, you know, I, I wanted the support. I wanted the uh, uh, help from him physically and emotionally. There was nothing there. He just said, just let my mom handle it. It's, you know, it's her grandson, da-da-da-da-da. Okay, um, so you know, so a couple of the games fell apart because she interfered. Um, How did she interfere? Well, she would tell she'd tell the children what to do. I mean, I liked you know it's their party, you mm -hmm. know, and and she kept telling them you know you're not running fast enough, mm -hmm. and um, she shouldn't get this prize because he really he didn't really win, and I mean. <laughs> It was just like, you know, what can I do it? And um, so anyway, we got the kids sent home, and um, I should I, I started talking to her, and I shouldn't have, I suppose. I just told her that, you know, why did she have to interfere that way? And I was upset. I told her I was upset by the doll that she put, you know, took away. And, uh, and then I kind of started attacking my husband right then in front of her, mm -hmm. too, which he was later told me that you don't ever talk to me in front of my mom that way. Um, that sounds just awful. So anyway. Yeah. Just Was awful. John still no, at that point, I had him go in the other room and play with his toys, so I, I don't think he heard any of this. Um, but anyway, she just felt, I felt that my mother-in-law was too dominant, and my father, or my husband was um, not emotionally there for me. 
mm. at all. He just, he just doesn't seem to, I don't, he doesn't see it the same way as I do. Mm -hmm. He just won't stand up for you, will he? <laughs> Real wimpy. I don't, I don't know, I don't like that word wimpy, but well, I guess I think it, but I don't yes. say it. Mm. But, and you've been feeling pretty upset ever since, or is it coming back oh, yeah. more as you're remembering it, or you've been pretty oh, charged oh, up? No. Yeah. <laughs> it is so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, because I said that we need, we need to talk, mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I brought up some issues that he was surprised at, mm -hmm. um, it, you know, and he, he said, uh, you know, I thought I always was there for you, and I mm -hmm. guess I, I guess I let out more than I wanted too much at one time, mm -hmm. and then I probably said too much about his mother-in-law, or his mom, my mm -hmm. mother-in-law. Um, I guess I need to pace when I tell him things. I can't yeah. just throw it all out, but I did. How much were you angry that day at your husband versus how much were you angry at your mother-in-law? I feel like 50-50 would be equal, but you know, what, what was the percentage, do you think? Oh, I don't know. It was uh, probably, I guess I was more at my husband because I care mm. really more for him, okay. you know, about him and our relationship in the, yeah. in the long run. So the, the biggest uh, negative feeling was the betrayal in some way, being, at least being let down not supported by the main support person in your life. Right. That was a stronger feeling than the anger at your mother-in-law, although you were mad at her too. Yes, I was certainly mad at her too. And, mm -hmm. and um, I think, um, oh, in fact, we talked about that last night, that, that I thought my anger was really geared more towards her. But mm -hmm. when, after we got talking, then I guess I realized that I was more angry about all this issue with my husband because I want mm -hmm. him to stand up to her too and he wouldn't do it. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is probably not the first time this has happened? In no. Your no, it's not, it's not yeah. the first time. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I should bring it up, you know, in this group or not, but... What, Whatever you want. Okay, what happened, um, it, this was a situation that I was pregnant when we got married. Mm -hmm. So, um, and he, the mo his mother-in-law's never, I felt, really liked me. You know, and it's like, what did I do to her? And my husband's the only child, the only son, the only child, and I don't know, I just felt like, ooh, I stepped in, mm -hmm. you know, maybe. So sometimes I even wonder if we should have even gotten married, you know? <laughs> yeah, so. You're feeling really bad. I am really yeah. feeling bad. Wow. I, yeah. and I was thinking, okay, before I got here today, I thought, do I bring this up? Should I come? Mm -hmm. And then I thought, no, yes. I need to come. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Is it okay with people that she's brought this up? Yeah. 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 She needs a Kleenex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's all right. Yeah. 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 Well, I don't know. Now I feel like my world's upside down. But. Mm -hmm. Well, so it's it's an issue that's that's really been around for a while, but it's surfaced around your son and the support you want from your husband in raising him. And it's particularly surfaced around whether you feel he will support you with his mother, who, who you find intrusive. And mm -hmm. Would you like to do some kind of problem solving with me about, about that particular kind of thing? It would, can't, you know, take on everything, but it, it, there might be some, some ways that we could talk about that kind of scene there and what you might do next with that or how to prevent that in the future, the scene around the party, because there can be a lot more parties. Right, right. If it's okay with the group, I guess, yeah. Okay. Definitely. If it's okay, I could really have some okay. help here. And, and uh, you'll have to, you know, you're ultimately the one that decides what you want to do with, with any of this, but I wanted to get a sense, a little clear sense of what happened that day. What was the first thing that your mother-in-law said that's, that put you off? Was it about the doll? Yes, the doll. And that she, she removed the doll. Um, she, she just physically took the doll and said, this doesn't, we should get this out of here before the children come. And what, who, who was present when she did that? Well, John had rushed up and showed her some of the gifts, and that was one of them. Okay. And looking at her face, I guess that's what set me off, is just like she kind of rolled her eyes. Okay. okay. And um, then um, John ran off to get another toy and left the doll there, and she took the doll. And uh, I watched her take it back to the back bedrooms. <clears throat> okay. Where was your husband at this point? He was standing right there. And okay. I, then I said something. I said, you know, why, she, why is she 
removing that, you know, don't you, you know, that's okay. not her place to do that. And then John wants it out here, he should have it out here. So d did you say anything to your mother-in-law first? No. So she, she did, she, she really was in charge at that point. She right. announced what she was going to do. Right. She did it. You were standing there feeling helpless, mm -hmm. frustrated, and the first words you said were to your husband. Right. Why, yes. why? What did you say to him? I asked him, why, you know, why do you think um, she took it out of here? John, it, it's you know, his birthday. If he wants to, to show all his toys to his friends, he should be able to do that. And, um, and he said, oh, just let it be. It's okay. Just let it be. Forget it. And then what did you say? And I said, yeah, we always have to forget it. And what did he say? Well, he said, let's not get into it now. Okay. So the kids are going to come, you know. Okay. And then the doorbell rang. So. And then the doorbell And there they were. Oh! <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Wow. And now your mother-in-law, what, she had returned from the bedroom? Right, she'd come that back out, you know, and... Um, and it's party time. Yeah, it's party time, smiling. so... Everything's nice and happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I feel for you, even that situation. Uh, with It's so hard to deal with some of these very tricky things when you're in the public domain, you know, when people are coming. Yeah. And, and sometimes you just have to cut yourself some slack on that. You know, you do your best mm -hmm. under the circumstances. It's kind of like when your kid's having a meltdown in a grocery store. You know, you, you do your best, you get through it. Um, but it's just, you know, it's important not to uh, be too critical of, of yourself in that situation. After it's all over, that's when you then make some more choices. You, you really, you, I think, you know, you can't do anything, as I said, when the kids are there. The kids leave. And at that point, you turn first to your mother-in-law. And what did you say to her? Well, after um, she had just interfered, after, you know, I, I felt like I was being judged during this birthday party at that point then. And she had just interfered just shortly before the children had left. And that was what I brought up before is that this, I don't know why this boy is getting this prize when he didn't really win the game. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and I and I just said, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to call her by name, but mm -hmm. uh, I just said, I can't believe today. I, you know, you've done this before, but I can't believe you did it today. And I said, I can't. I'm going to have to just keep going here. I'm going to tell you what's on my mind right now. Mm -hmm. And she was really taken aback because I I haven't done that. You know, yeah. she might have felt it from me before. Right. I don't know. But you were. But I, she's never. How did she respond? Said, but she looked right, right away. She's looking over at my husband. Oh, he's standing there as well. He's standing there. Yeah, he's um, looking sheepish. Mm -hmm. Not making uh, eye contact, or no, he's not making eye contact with me. Uh, he's looking at his mom, like, kind of like, let's mm -hmm. just let it ride. You know? mm -hmm. Let her have her way or something, I don't know. And so that's the message I was kind of getting from him is like he looked at her and not me. So it's, it's like you felt he was lined up with her against you. That's, that's the message that okay. I felt, right? And that's when the rage really would come out in you mm -hmm. and w why you let him have it later on. It isn't that, it, was just, it wasn't just that his mother-in-law had done some things, or his mother had done some things that made the party very hard for you, but that when you looked up, with this strong negative feeling about what had happened, and there they were, mother and son, there, and you over here, that you must have felt alone and betrayed and... Right, right, so well, and then, you know, and I said some inappropriate things. I mean, before I left the room, stomped out, mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, you two make quite a pair. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you had a bit of a temper laughed. tantrum yourself there. <laughs> oh, but it felt good, huh? Good I know, you. but I was so, yeah, when I hit the bedroom, I started to cry, and I uh, felt just embarrassed. Like, yeah. now, you know, because you know you're going to have to face two people that, yeah. I mean, you yeah. know. That, and then you felt embarrassed coming here today. And, right, and right. About, so yeah. it's been, yes, it's been a lot of, of embarrassment yeah. <laughs> feelings and yeah. whatnot. You know, the, 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 the embarrassment and the temper outburst, may have almost been inevitable. Yeah, I guess your only choices were to you know, blast out or get depressed uh, b because of the situation you were in. You were in a no-win situation there when you were confronting your mother-in-law and your husband was not on your side. When you and he did not have an agreement that you were going to challenge her, you mm -hmm. couldn't win there. Okay? Yeah. You couldn't win. And any already bad situation was going to get worse. And you were going to feel betrayed. I don't know about the rest of you, 
but when I feel betrayed, I'm not on my best behavior. Okay? No. It's a very difficult feeling to have when you look at your spouse or somebody that you think is your, on your side as your partner, and all of a sudden they're on the other side. Because at that moment, your mother-in-law was clearly felt like the enemy. I mean, you know she loves your child and all that, mm -hmm. but at that moment, mm -hmm. she was the enemy and the ruiner. And then you look over, and there he is on the other side. And so the, the, way, I'm, the way I'm thinking about it is that that maybe the focus on the main focus focus on your mother-in-law which was also the main focus here when we talked about this last week you know what you can do with her and what you might say maybe that's premature maybe that's not what you should be focusing on right now rather focus now would be on you and your husband because there's not much you can really do with her if he's not with you mm -hmm. okay i can see that does that make sense to other yeah, people as well? Yes. Okay. And so, so what I'd like to suggest you think about doing is perhaps approaching your husband this week at a time when you're calm and you think he's in a reasonable mood. You might want to acknowledge at the start that you didn't feel good about some of the things you said. Because you said you didn't feel good. I didn't, no. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it's a good way. If you're going to really challenge somebody, it's always a good idea to try to look at one's own behavior and say, okay, is there some part of this that I need to sign up for? And, and to begin with that acknowledgement that I, I regret that I, I said that. Um, but then go on to say that you've been thinking a lot about this. And if you want, how does he feel about this group? You're coming here. Um, well, Does he would he, just be upset if he uh, knew what I said today. Okay. okay. But he, it's fine if we're, you know, the parent, uh, parent part and, okay. and for sharing about um, things that I've learned for John. But okay. this, I could never say I brought okay. this up to So this. I wouldn't mention it then, no. okay? <laughs> if he really thought this was a cat's meow, then I might say, and the group, you know, we talked about that, but I wouldn't say that. But just say you've been thinking about it, as indeed you have. And that. You want, to, you want to have some time to talk with him. And I do this without children around. I do this at a time when you have some, some time together and some privacy. And that you've been thinking a lot about what's happened over the years with his mom and you. And you want to make it better. You don't want to go on like this. And you, and you also know it must be hard for him. Let him say how it's hard for him. And then I'm suggesting you say you want to talk about some of these things with him long enough, often enough, so that you have an agreement about what you want for your children and what role you want your mother-in-law to play. What's okay and what's not okay for her to do and say. And let him know that you realize you'll have to do some changing here, but that you would also like him to work with you so that you can have something together. What's your reaction to that? Um, I think, you know, I can see what you're saying with the um, idea of, of I certainly want to work with my husband on this and, mm -hmm. and to um, patch things up as it may. I'm, I'm a little concerned um, that he'll think, um, that he'll, he'll keep bringing up other issues, you know, other issues mm -hmm. that, you know, about how I don't get along with my other mother-in-law. But mm -hmm. I guess I would like to just, I'm more of a forward person. Mm -hmm. And he's, I, he's kind of a back, you know, still, mm -hmm. Well, remember what happened last week. Okay. Uh -huh. Well, so what I don't can you to... say if he if he says, "Well, how about last week and last month and last year?" You want to look for what could you say at that point? Um, you know that I'm just I uh, I really kind of explained just my feelings then that I you know I've forgotten about that now. I mean I'm just looking ahead. Mm -hmm. Can we forget about it instead okay. of bringing up back issues? Mm -hmm. And, um, okay, that sounds really good. Does that sound good to people as well? Mm -hmm. d d you know, you can say, I realize that I've made mistakes, other people have made mistakes in the past. I want to I wanna make this better. You know, keep, keep repeating, the reason you're bringing it up is to make it better. Right, I like that, and I also like involving him. How does it make you feel yeah. with this? Because yeah. he's, he must be acutely uncomfortable. You're the two most important women in his life, and you're not getting along. And he feels right in the middle. You know, to be honest, I haven't really asked him. Like, I mean, you know, just I haven't been ready to hear it, I guess, yeah. maybe. So, yeah. and maybe after today I can be ready. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say sometimes, too, because we all lived with that, too, when we first got married. And it's hard to tell your mom that what she's doing, you don't agree with it, you don't accept. That's really hard to do. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. for him to have to tell his mom that, that, that's not easy. And, you know, he puts it off, doesn't want to confront her. And then uh, you end up where you are. Mm -hmm. 
you can only go as far in confronting her about something with the children as far as he's willing to go himself. It's mm -hmm. like how far out on that limb you can go as far as he can go with you. Mm -hmm. And so some of the change you could make is to not get yourself further out there where he's not supporting you. So talk <laughs> with him about it. These things are coming up over and over. Talk with him about the party. Talk about specifics, not what kind of person she is, okay? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, whatever. Or he has okay. got to stand up to his mouth. Not, nothing global, but around these specific things. And keep talking about it until you two come to a consensus and an agreement so that the next time she comes to visit and, and she says, what's this doll doing here? That you two have a plan of how you're going to respond to it. And my ideal plan, you know, I don't know your husband, is that the blood relative says it first. Mm -hmm. Mom, it's okay with us that he has this doll. You know, read my lips. Okay? Yeah, I'd like to be. You can back him up then, mm -hmm. but he's got to say it. Now, you can't make him say it, but I'm really suggesting you set yourself, you don't set yourself up to be the fall guy. Okay. for a situation in which he, you, you've said before, he agrees with you about the doll, mm -hmm. okay? So this is not a values clash here, okay? This is, he agrees with you. And I would talk with him, hearing his feelings first, okay? So that you really, you know, you, are, you let him know you care and you understand his situation. But keep working on it and see if he's willing to sign up with you and then have a plan. Have a plan for who goes first. You'd have to zip it up yourself because you're used to going first mm -hmm. in this. You'd have to zip it up, and he'd have to do it in his way. See, he may not do it in the way I just said. He okay. might say, well, you know, Mom, and he may make it a little bit funny, but she'll be listening. Okay. She'll be listening, okay? So you can't critique his performance. If he, if he gets it across, somehow he gets it across, it's okay, we have this doll. And he doesn't do it the same way you do. You've got to not critique his performance because mm -hmm. it's his mom. He's got to figure out how to do it. Mm -hmm. You've got to support him on that. But, he, but you're inviting him and asking him to, when you agree on something, that he take the lead in setting the boundary with, with his mom. No guarantees this will this will do the trick. No guarantees. But how, how does it feel? How does it feel about trying something like this? Well, I feel much calmer right now. Okay. Anyway, and okay. yeah, it feels it feels good. I I think it could work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, okay, just and have I to get hope, the right time. And I think, <laughs> as far as you and the group, you know, you really have uh, brought more of yourself here today. Um, do people want to? We've all been there in one, yeah. one way or another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess I appreciate your honesty. It mm -hmm. gives us courage and mm -hmm. hope to try things. Thank you, guys. And, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. <laughs>
and uh, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not even really excited when he comes home from work now. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, like, because I know what the evening's going to be like. So I, yeah. I don't know what to do. Yeah. You're, you're feeling pretty uh, hopeless at the moment? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. How long have you been married? Uh, four and a half years. Four and a half years, yeah. And have you been feeling this way, at least in times of tension or conflict, all along, or was it pretty good at one point and then started to more downhill? It, it's, it's, um, I'd say it started out pretty good. And um, as, you know, as I mentioned in group last week, um, I was pregnant when we were married, and so we both said we would, uh, we would work real hard to get beyond that and become parents right away. And I felt like we were, we were good uh, with parent, parenting at first. And then we just, I don't know, I just seemed like the mother, my mother-in-law interfered so much. And it started eating away with me that the response the way my husband respond, mm -hmm. his lack of response, let me put it that way. And, uh, and, and I have a temper. Mm -hmm. So... And He's he more laid down. back. Right. I have a temper. And then he gets the temper eventually when you push right. him. Yeah. Right. And he keeps bringing up things from the past. And I, so I don't know. It's just really a mess So right things now. were okay for a while. Mm -hmm. And then when you became parents, then you really began to have more conflict. And you had the triangle with mother-in-law mm -hmm. there as well. And you're feeling pretty bad right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we yeah, and he's feeling bad too. I can yeah. tell. And he's you know? feeling bad too. Yeah, it must be. I mean, no, it's no not fun just me. Sure, sure. Um, you know, we do care about each other, and but um, and we have you know worked it out in the past. We just talk about it, and it's like it's kind of come to agreement that there's only some things we just can't work out. Mm. Yeah. We, you know, and then mm -hmm. we just okay, and then every once in a while, then something happens like this, yeah. and then we're off on no talking or screaming at each other. Right. So you care about him, mm -hmm. and, he, and you believe he cares about you, but when times get rough like this, you kind of tear at each other. Mm -hmm. Have you ever considered getting some help with, with some marital therapy or some help to try to get past this pattern? You know, I have kind of thought about mm -hmm. that, but I've never brought it up. Mm -hmm. I just thought, um, what you know, maybe that I don't. Sometimes that's not, to cases like this, I don't feel like we can resolve this together. So I have thought about it, mm -hmm. but we haven't discussed it. Yeah. So it's, when you say thought about it, you think it's something that might might be helpful, could possibly be helpful. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe I'm not sure what happens. Mm -hmm. You know, at therapy. Um, mm -hmm. Do you both? You know, I don't know. I mean, you don't know that we're not going to know the therapist or anything. I don't know what questions does he ask. I don't. Yeah. Well, a uh, the therapist is a third party who can help the two of you sit down and talk about things and get some perspective on things that you may not be able to talk through or get perspective on when you're just alone. Um, so that, uh, it's, you know, it's harder to somebody to sort of pull out of the conversation, let's say, when, when a therapist is there to help you, help you think it through. What often happens is people in therapy learn more about how the other is really feeling. The, the, it sounds like the feeling you got from your husband was his anger. There's a whole lot more beneath mm -hmm. that. He maybe hears your hurt and anger a lot, but not a whole lot of other things. And so one of the things that can happen in marital therapy is that people can really come to understand each other better. Because I bet not much understanding came out of the conversation the other night. Mm -mm. No. We both felt helpless, I think. Yeah. But I understand that you're a little anxious about what that would mean, you know, to, to go to somebody and it's not something you've been, you've no. done before. So do we go, you know, do we go together or, I mean, right well, away or yeah, how does most, that work? Most of the time, most uh, therapists in the, uh, would see you together, certainly initially at least, and, uh, and, and try to get a sense of what you want. You're saying you really want to make this marriage work. Mm -hmm. and do you believe your husband does? Mm -hmm. I do. That's the most important ingredient that you have now in, in making marital therapy work is that you both still care about each other and you want to make this work. How do you think your husband would respond if you brought that up to him? Well, you know, I, I think he'll be okay with it. I'm not sure. Do mm -hmm. you have a suggestion how to bring it up? <laughs> well, are you interested? I don't want to... No, I am interested. You are interested. Okay. Yes, so I you, am. you are at the point where you think this would be worth trying. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you could tell him that. 
Okay. No, no big, no big secrets or tricks about this. But to, to just tell him at a at a calm moment that you have been thinking a lot about the the problems that you have and that you love him and you want this relationship to work out and you're committed to working it out and that you really would like the two of them to talk about going to a therapist. I know um, a couple of things right off that I'm thinking of that he'll ask is like who would it be and how much would it cost? Mm -hmm. Well, you have those questions too? <laughs> yes. Okay, sure. Those are reasonable questions. You're in a, what, your health insurance, you have health insurance? Yes, okay. yes. Okay, and are you connected with an HMO? Right, right. Okay, um, and I think I, I know which HMO because we've talked about that before. Uh, one of the things that that I know about that HMO is I know the particular uh, individual that you would call uh, to go about setting up a, an evaluation session. Um, and that's a number I have. And uh, it, you know, when you make that call, if you'd like me to talk with her about this, because we we work back and forth sometimes with families, mm -hmm. uh, then I'd be happy. I'd be happy to to do that as well. So with your HMO, my understanding is that you would pay, um, you know, a certain percentage of the fee. I'm not sure exactly what the fees are, but um, you would pay probably. The last time I checked, it would probably be in the order of about twenty dollars for a session. It may have may have changed, but that was the last time I checked. And they often see people every other week. Sometimes they see people weekly, so it's it's kind of in that range. Now, is that something that you think you might be able to afford if if that's still what they're they're charging? I I think so. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And. The whole thing with therapy is you have to feel like you click with the person that you that you work with, and th there are good people in that system. And I know the person who makes the decisions about where where people get assigned. And uh, it'd be important for you to let let that individual know what you need. If you want me to do some some talking as well, I can do that as I well. I would like that. I would mm -hmm. like your help with that. If you, would you feel comfortable sure, then? Sure, sure. Okay. We'd need to sign the forms and okay. all that kind of thing so that can happen. But the first step would be for you to talk to your husband. Right. And uh, why don't you, uh, why don't you just, why don't you let me know? Okay. Okay, so, so that I'll have some follow-up from our conversation about, about what the two of you have decided. Okay. Uh, I can give you today the name and phone number of the person to call at, at your HMO, and you can proceed to do that uh, if, if you and your husband both want, and you can let me know, and uh, if you'd like me to talk with them, then we can fill out the paperwork so that, so that there'd be release for you to do that for me to do that. I'd appreciate that, so okay. I'll call you then. Okay, well, it's an important decision, uh, and, and I'm very supportive of it, because I think that it's, it's clear that you really care for him, and as you describe him, he cares for you. And as I said the other week, I don't think the problems with your mother-in-law are going to get resolved until you and your husband form a, uh, a, a better partnership, and you've got you know, you have the glue there, you know, you, you have a relationship where you care and you're only four and a half years married, you know, you're not 20 and a half years married and, I, and I'm very supportive of the idea of you getting some help at this point. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Okay.